Welcome to this presentation of Freight Professional um, 6. Today's topic is rendering 1 billion polygons in real time with Freight Professional. So, as you might have heard, um, Freight is one of the world's fastest ray tracing rendering engines. And right now we do have a data set of about 31 million polygons. And we are ray tracing it in real time with a frame rate between, well, let's say, three and eight frames per second. Of course, the uh, frame per second or the, the speed depends on the size I'm rendering my image. So if I activate my downscale, he's just rendering half of the width and half of the height. So actually we have a frame rate of about 25 frames per second. So we can actually talk about real time. Um, to make sure that we are ray tracing, I can check my mirror, my mirroring objects. And yes, I see the exact um, reflections of my interior in my mirrors. I could even fly into my interior and take a closer look to some details here. Here we go. Very nice, very beautiful. If I start my anti-aliasing, this image will be a little bit darker. This is just because of now the shadows are casted by the HDR. But I could go into my camera module and select my tone mapping. And um, even while the rendering is going on, I can change my exposure so that even during rendering, I can increase the brightness of my image. Very nice. All right. So again, the topic of this um, presentation is rendering 1 billion polygons in real time. Right now we are actually um, rendering 36 million polygons. So we need some more polygons. Before I show you some more polygons, I want to show you our Skylight system. So um, we are rendering an image with an HDR in the background, which is um, projected onto a so-called sky dome. And you can see that the um, shadows are actually casted by this HDR. And since we are using um, a Skylight material, we are actually able to influence my sky to influence my um, sunlight. So let's select the material. Here we go. And as you can see, I can control the lightning situations um, by using a map. Right now I'm somewhere in Greenland. Let's go to, let's say, um, southern, Euro southern Europe. And you see the, um, in the direct change of my shadow. And of course, I can choose another um, another time. For example, let's choose um, some light situation in the morning. Here we go. You see that the entire light situation changes. The shadow is casted from another direction. And yeah, this is our sunlight system. So, um, of course, we can't only use um, sunlight skip systems. We also can um, use simple HDR um, environments. For example, we have an HDR environment of an airfield from somewhere. And you see again that the shadow and the entire light situation really um, depends on this HDR, depends on my surrounding. So, but let's go back to the one billion polygons. And in this case, there is a um, we prepared a little um, environment for the scene. So right now, it's, as you can see, it's just a, a sky dome. But if I press a defined hotkey, I will make my um, sky dome invisible and will make my environment visible. And here we go. So um, you still see the um, rendering of my, of my Skoda right now. If we um, sample the image, we again have, have shadows, we have, a nice, um, we have nice reflections. We have a little bit of global illumination right now, but let's take a look what else we do have in the scenes. Okay, we have some stone geometries. You can see it's very um, dense data right here. Here we go. But we also have some other um, moving objects in here. For example, we have a, a helicopter over here. A complete model of a helicopter. Let's sample this for a second. All right, here we go. And we could even go into the interior of this helicopter. Here we go. 
And as you can see, we have fully interior of one helicopter. All right. But again, let's go back to our um, Skoda for now, because I want to show you that there's an animation on my car. So I will activate my timeline. I will select another camera, which is called Master. And I will just scroll through time. Here we go. Here my camera is within the car. The car is moving. Here we are. So as you can see, we have an entire animation through a fully modeled environment. Uh -huh. Here's a car, some kind of winding road. Okay, let's change the focal length a little bit. And ah, as you can see in the background, we have um, some, sky, some skyscrapers, so there's geometry of a city. And we can see a little bit more helicopters up here. Ah, okay, I've animated my um, field of view. This is why the camera jumped back again. Again, we have an... Um, yes, this is a um, modeled bridge with um, using a glass material. So we actually do have a little bit of refraction right now um, behind the, the glass tabs. And of course, what you can see here is that the scene is fully rendered with motion blur. So we're actually using a real motion blur. And on top of this, we are also using a real depth of field. I would stop the sampling and just keep on going through the scene. Okay, here we are in a, a little tunnel. And after we moved out of the tunnel, I want to show you again how our depth of field is working. For example, if we take a look at this frame right here, I'm able to um, to select my camera. And here I'm able now to define, okay, what kind of depth of field do I want, do I want to use right now? Um, as you can see, there is a motion blur activated. So we are not rendering motion blur anymore. And you can see that we are using a little bit of depth of field. Let me check how much it is. Actually, we are using an f-step of 2. So as you can see in the background, it's a little bit of unsharpness in the background. Okay, let's finish up the animation. Okay, here we go. And we are back in my um, rendering again, in my um, beginning position again. So let's go back to, let's say, frame 400 or something like this and change the camera again. Let's go to my perspective camera. Fantastic. Where's the Skoda? Actually, I lost it. Ah, here we go. So again, to show you depth of field, just select the camera, just activate depth of field, and choose an f-stop. For example, in this case, we have an f-stop of 5.6. I want to show you a little bit more. So let's say, okay, I want an f-stop of maybe um, 1. I can choose my focus point. I chose the mirror right now. And you can see that the image is rendered again with very heavy depth of field. So there's a lot of big difference between the um, focus point and the unsharp background. The other way around, of course, I can double click the geometry in the background and the image will be re-rendered with a new focus point in the, in the background. All right, so let's take a closer look to the scene where I'm moving right now. Maybe we can animate to another position, maybe something like this. And here we actually we have a full overview of the entire scene. So actually we don't have just one helicopter, we have about 200 helicopters. And we have a fully modeled or sculpted geometry. We have a lake geometry, we have plants over here, we have a city in the background. We have two bridges, a winding road over here. And um, yeah, as you can see the image is almost finished after 10 seconds or so. And if we take a look to our statistics, we can just um, count how many polygons we have. And we actually have 1,064,708,865 polygons. 
and actually I'm still moving in real time. So as you can see, I'm still moving with about five frames per second. It depends on actually where I'm moving my camera. If I have a lot of um, HDR in my in my render window, of course the m frames per second uh, uh, the frames per second increase a lot. Of course, if I render a lot of geometry, the frames per second um, gets a little bit lower. Here to get an entire overview of the of the scene, I will just go into a top view and the image sample. And here we have a great overview of the scene. We have a road with a tunnel over here, a winding road here, winding road here, and about, yeah, let's say 200 helicopters actually, each with about 20 million polygons. Um, let's take a closer look to the bridge over here. Yeah, here we go. Let's make a rendering of this again. And again, we have a very nice overview of the scene. Um, what I want to show you here is that we are, um, of course, able to change our environment. Let's just select the skylight material, select it. And again, we are able to um, influence the entire lighting situation in real time. So let's say I, again, am in, in Greenland somewhere. Let's maybe move to, let's say, the Grand Canyon area in Arizona. So you see the entire scene is a lot of brighter, a lot more sun information, a lot less shadows. Um, let's maybe go into the evening somewhere. And you again see that the entire lighting situation changes. Um, the light is a little bit more red. We have a lot more shadows. Almost the entire um, streets are in the, in the shadow right now. Yeah, let's go to another viewpoint. Um, and let's go to frame. I guess it was 432. No, it was not. Ah, yeah, here we go. So here we have an helicopter. And again, I want to um, show you how to render this image with motion blur, with depth of field. So activate my camera, simply select um, depth of field and motion blur, select the focus point, select uh, an f-stop, and select the shutter speed, in this case 40. And again, you see a rendering, very fast performance rendering with depth of field, with motion blur, as you can see. In about, let's say, two minutes, we will have a fully perfect um, image. All right, um, that's about it. Last but not least, I will again go to um, this viewpoint because I actually like it the best and just start sampling the image and um, yeah, see you next time.